my dear students after a long time i welcome the undergraduates for rats racing against time for students in pathology and the topic for the day is men syndrome in fact i would like to thank one of our students who had taken the initiative to bring the list of topics that have not been covered and this is one such one the importance of the topic and the sources of reference are given on the screen think of the subheadings the subheadings will take you to the answer kindly follow this principle even when the question is quite short or it is a short essay even a short note the definition is from robbins in fact a lot of salient features i had taken from robbins thanks to him definition men syndrome are a group of inherited disorders caused by the proliferative lesions which might mean hyperplasia adenoma or carcinoma of multiple endocrine organs so the answer is there in itself multiple endocrine neoplasia and that will be including hyperplasia also the men syndrome was first described by paul vermeer in 1915 and it was called men 1 because subsequently there have been other types of men that have been identified the salient features are it occurs at an younger age as mentioned earlier multiple endocrine organs are affected they may be synchronously or metachronously affected what does it mean synchronous means all the organs or endocrine organs are affected simultaneously whereas metachronous means it can be at different times or at different sequence even in a single organ it can be multifocal there can be a hyperplasia for example a specific type of cell the c cells of the thyroid can be affected in general the men neoplasm are more aggressive i hope this itself gives us quite a lot of material we will go through the various men in sequence men 1 otherwise called as vermeer syndrome quite rare and remember three p's parathyroid pancreas and pituitary in the parathyroid there can be a hyperplasia or adenoma pancreas it is aggressive and there can be a zollinger ellison syndrome which can be associated with a peptic ulcer or there can be a gastrinoma in a pituitary there can be an adenoma to be more specific a prolactinoma so three p's please do remember that is men one or the vermeer syndrome and it is associated with the menin gene which is a tumor suppressor gene stupid mnemonic in fact i like mnemonics this is in fact a usual mnemonic to remember the associated neoplasia men 1 three p's have to be remembered pituitary parathyroid and pancreas 2a on the contrary has got two p's and one m 2b has got one p and two m's quite easy to remember this is later on given in a tabular form also 2a consists of pyochromocytoma parathyroid 
and medullary thyroid carcinoma. 2B has got pheochromocytoma, medullary carcinoma of the thyroid and a marfanoid habitus or mucosal neuroma. So this we shall be remembering. Also 2B has later been changed to 3. So let us remember this much for the time being. The general mode of inheritance for men's syndrome is autosomal dominant. So whenever one of the parent has got it, you find that it is passed on to the children. So here it is an unaffected parent, here it is an affected parent and it happens to be autosomal dominant and both the male and the female child are affected. So 50% of the children are affected in it. For us to remember, please do see this. It might be a men's syndrome, but it affects women also. So this is one. This is the adrenal in which I am seeing pheochromocytomata in fact, bilateral, not asymmetrical, it has got a lobulated appearance, a lobulated appearance. This is a pheochromocytoma from a 30 year old man with men's syndrome, type 2A. It can be multinodular, multicentric pattern on both sides, it can occur, courtesy AFIP. Also, you find that there can be a pituitary hyperplasia or a pituitary adenoma. This also is part of a men's syndrome and we shall be having this in mind. So this is the pituitary gland at the base of the brain. I find that there is a nodule. This can be a pituitary microadenoma or a hyperplasia. Passaro's triangle. Approximately 70 to 90 percent of the gastrinomas are found in the anatomical space called Passaro's triangle. And what is this one? It is somewhere between the cystic and the common bile duct and it goes to the second part of the duodenum and again back to the third part of the duodenum there is a triangle in which there can be the body and the head of the pancreas also caught. So this is called a Pesaro's triangle. Please do remember it has got some importance. The source of the image is given here. So this is important. I would like you people to kindly buy heart this particular tabular form. Men 1, there is a pituitary adenoma. There can be a parathyroid hyperplasia. There can be pancreatic tumors. In men 2A, there will be again parathyroid hyperplasia, there can be a medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. Parathyroid is affected, thyroid is affected. Also you can see a pheochromocytoma of the adrenals. 2B, otherwise called as 3, has got mucosal neuromas. There is a morphonoid buildup of the body. Medullary carcinoma of the thyroid can be present and here again there can be pheochromocytoma. So just remember the mnemonic 1P and 2Ms. Both the morphonoid and the mucosal neuroma have been clubbed together. This incidentally is a slide of medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. I find that the cells are small, uniform and seen throughout. This is called an organoid pattern. Organoid means it resembles an endocrine and obviously it is an endocrine gland. Uniform cells arranged in an organoid pattern. Also I find that there is a deposition of homogeneous, pale, eosinophilic, acellular material namely the amyloid. All of you know that amyloid and medullary carcinoma go hand in hand. This is a picture just given out of interest. If people have been finding it difficult so far, let us see. Obviously, the students are great. Remember the triangle. 
it can be the oral the adrenal and there can be the other adrenal also affected in a case of 2b bilateral as the picture i had shown you earlier diamond there are two parathyroids which are affected pituitary on the top and pancreas below square two parathyroids two pheochromocytoma what more do you people want so wonderful mnemonic designs i would like you people to kindly recall that men one multiple endocrine neoplasia one it occurs due to a mutation in the tumor suppressor gene and it is a germ line mutation please do remember this menin can be asked as a mcq the three p's we already know parathyroid pancreas and pituitary in the parathyroid that can be either a hyperplasia or an adenoma in the pancreas there can be a gastrinoma leading to zollinger ellison syndrome or there can be an insulinoma leading to hypoglycemia in pituitary there will be an adenoma secreting prolactin so these are the features of men1 and this again is a summary of the three main types of men syndrome in men1 we had seen pituitary adenoma parathyroid hyperplasia pancreatic tumors men 2a on the contrary has got parathyroid hyperplasia it is a repetition there will be a medullary carcinoma of the thyroid and pheochromocytoma 2b otherwise called as 3 now is composed of you can club both of these together mucosal neuromas and morphonoid habitus medullary carcinoma thyroid and pheochromocytoma so check whether you people can recall the 3 p's 1m and 2 p's 2m and 1p so that is how you people remember this a beautiful mnemonic thanks to wikipedia thanks to other sources and if you are not confused enough look at this picture so there are multiple circles and ovals that have been drawn and that encompass the lesions that come in each kindly go through and see whether you can recall men1 men2 men3 and men4 men3 and men2 b are the same so please see whether you people can recall there is a soft tissue tumor or a lipoma also included men2 multiple endocrine neoplasia 2 this is again divided into 2a and 2b there are two distinct groups of disorders and the defect here is the ret proto oncogene and this is located in chromosome 10q 11.2 in 2a we see the medullary carcinoma or a c cell hyperplasia sometimes it can be familial also in the adrenal there is a pheochromocytoma and there can also be a parathyroid hyperplasia or hyperparathyroidism so these are the features of 2a and this incidentally is a bilateral adrenal tumor earlier we have seen which has got a lobulated appearance and not symmetrical 2b is composed of a single gene mutation it is different from 2a there can be extra endocrine manifestations extra endocrine manifestations see now the mcqs can be pheochromocytoma is classical of 1 2a 2b 4 and you people will have to make out the answer sipples disease is classical of 1 2 3 4 you will have to make a diagnosis and extra endocrine manifestations are seen in 1 2 3 4 you should be able to make a diagnosis it is a permutation combination so repetition is the mother of knowledge 
The extra endocrine will include ganglioneuroma as well as morphonoid features. And the genetic testing will be identifying the RET mutation. And the patient will be advised anyway to have a thyroidectomy done to rule out a medullary carcinoma. I said morphonoid feature and this particular person you people will have to remember. The name is on the screen. His quotes are wonderful. We shall be repeating them. The morphonoid features are again described well in rats. I would like you people to go through them. That itself can be a question for you. And also there can be neurofibroma or mucosal neuroma. Look at this one. This is a tongue and it has got multiple nodules over here and these have been found out to be neuromas or ganglioneuromas and in the eye also there is a thickening over here that is because of an ocular neuroma. Sipple syndrome it is associated with this mutation and there is a medullary carcinoma of the thyroid the organoid feature over here and the acellular amyloid that is deposited. There can also be Hirschsprung's disease and a bilateral pheochromocytoma or an extra adrenal pheochromocytoma. So this is a picture of a pheochromocytoma. This itself is a question for you people. Please do remember. It is somewhat mahogany brown in color, well circumscribed. We cannot say whether it is benign or malignant. Please find out the rule of 10 and you people I have got this as a question. I am finding the normal adrenal and a well circumscribed tumor. And here I find that the cells are arranged in a pattern. These are all the capillaries and there are nests of cells. And this pattern of arrangement, there is a circle over here within which I am finding. So also here. So this particular pattern of arrangement is called a gel balance pattern of arrangement for tumor cells typical of pheochromocytoma and MCQ for you. So, until now we had seen 1, 2A and 2B, later on call 3. Now, what is MEN4? It is one of the recent additions. It is a rare autosomal dominant disorder again. It involves tumors of the parathyroid, pituitary as well as stomach, other tumors of the adrenal, kidney, etc. are also included in this panel. There is a mutation in this call, the CDKN1B, cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor 1B gene. This is similar to the phenotype MEN1. It was first discovered by Pellegra et al. and Later on, it has been relabeled as MENX in 2008. It is a little complex, but for the time being, let us remember that there is an entity called MEN4 also, which can affect the other organs such as ovary, parathyroid, pituitary, stomach, adrenal, etc. And this is a beautiful summary. I would like you people to kindly make a note of it and then study. In fact, the simple syndrome itself can be a question for you people. How do you approach a case of multiple endocrine neoplasia? Obviously, it is very complex. Therefore, a detailed family history is needed, whether any other member is affected. What are the clinical manifestations? Is it limited to one organ or to multiple organs? If the C cells of the parathyroid are going to be affected, there can be a hypercalcemia, mobilization of calcium, and this can result in calculi. Also by mobilization, there can be a porosis in the bone, osteoporosis. If there is going to be a neuroma in the eye, there will be visual disturbances. Gastrinoma, we all know, can lead to a heartburn or a peptic ulcer. And if there is a history of multiple cancers or surgeries, we should be cautious. Hence, a detailed approach is needed. 
also you find that there will be a lot of investigations that have to be done it can be based on the hormones parathormone the serum calcium or prolactin insulin blood glucose etc when there is going to be a mobilization there can be a change in the bone density multiple tumors can be identified by means of the ct scans see whether the visual fields have been affected the treatment generally is organ based however it is a multidisciplinary approach and sometimes a family counseling is mandatory i hope this list is quite good for you people i am a slow walker but i never walk back and these are some of the questions that can repeatedly haunt us please do remember that a lot of questions permutation combinations are possible in this let us see whether you are able to identify the source of this picture where does this come from it is quite famous i hope the people shall do it see you in next class